This episode is sponsored by Agent CRM. If you're in sales and tired of paying three, four, or five different companies for your email, CRM, funnels, phone, follow-up automation, check out Agent CRM. It's an all-in-one tool that combines all that you need to reach out, nurture, and close your clients. They've got weekly support calls so you can get up and running in no time. Get a free 14-day trial by going to the link below in the show notes. Hello, everyone. This is Dan Wynn with the Intentional Entrepreneur Podcast. I have a very special guest with me today. He's a 30-year franchise consultant, certified franchise executive, and the founder of Smart Franchise Investing. I want to welcome to the show Marty Greenbaum. Hey, Dan. Great to be here. Thanks so much. I'm looking forward to the show. A lot to share today. I, I'm looking forward to uh, chatting with you. You know, franchising is a is a very big, uh, very big industry. Um, and today we're going to talk about what are the types of franchises that are really recession proof. Before, but before we kind of get into the nitty gritty, can you share a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you are today? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Well, listen, I um, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And so I started in a franchising family. My family started a brand called PostNet. They're like UPS stores, okay? And we opened up hundreds of them globally. And then at the age of 28, being the youngest of four brothers in the family business, I decided to go off on my own. And I was uh, an entrepreneur and I started a marketing company. And I didn't know a ton about marketing, but over the years, I grew that into a well-respected franchise marketing company, working mm. with national franchise brands like Ben & Jerry's, Smoothie King, Hertz Rent-A-Car, Remax, Fast Signs. I was very active in the International Franchise Association, um, a certified franchise executive, as you mentioned. I've been at hundreds of franchise shows, been at corporate offices of franchisors. And at a certain point, being a marketing strategist in franchising, traveling the country, spending a lot of my time away from home, I got to a point where I got a little bit burnt out, to be honest with you. And I was looking at what I transit would transition into. And it was just uh, made great sense to stay in franchising, but become what they call a franchise consultant. Um, as a franchise consultant, what I do every day is I work with people that are looking to um, either make investments in franchising or change your career into franchising and finding that perfect business, that perfect fit for them. So now I'm a franchise consultant and matchmaker. I basically help people investigate franchising and explore it and really determine, uh, does it make sense for them? What would be a good fit? Perfect. So today, um, you know, we we're kind of at, hopefully at the tail end of COVID, but you know, the the economy has uh, gone stagnant a little bit. There's been a lot of layoffs, especially with the tech industry. Uh, some people say we're already in a recession. Some people say a recession is is looming. Um, but today, we want to talk about what what franchises are 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 recession proof. Well, listen, um, let's let's kind of broaden that to you know what categories are recession proof. Okay, because really, when I work with people. It's about finding the right fit. And a lot of people, they have, you know, they come to the t table with all kinds of different, you know, skills and abilities, right? Mm -hmm. The funny thing, let me just share this with you. You know, first of all, 70% of people that end up buying a franchise, buy a franchise in an industry where they had no prior experience, okay? So first of all, you don't have to limit yourself. You don't have to worry like, hey, can I get into a senior care franchise, even though I never had interest in, you know, or, or experience in senior care, definitely. They do it every day, right? It's about, you know, have you worked with, um, have you managed people, you know? How good are you at customer service and, you know, what type of customer experience could you deliver on, right? Can you follow the systems of a franchise? Some people have sales experience. If you don't have it and the business requires it, you could always hire somebody. With. So, you know, these franchises, it's not 
It's not um, like I don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole. I'll mm-hmm. be honest with you. What I want to do when I'm working with someone, and I think it's important for anybody who's thinking about, you know, investing or, or changing careers or just now you could change careers and get into a franchise or you could be a semi absentee, you know, mm-hmm. franchise owner. But again, it's it's about finding the right match for you. Now, when it comes to recession proof, right? Um, as you said, it's hard to know and who to listen to anymore to, to kind of know, is it going to get worse? Like you hear a lot of things like, hey, it's going to get a lot worse. You almost have to count on that. Like, hey, there's a good chance it could get worse before it gets better. Mm-hmm. Right. That's I'm hearing a lot of that, too. So a lot of the people that I'm working with and I work with the broad spectrum of of uh, business professionals. Right. So, um, you know, they're looking for something that if, if it does get worse, they're going to be OK. Right. So think about this. If a recession hits and your car breaks down. Are you still going to bring it and get it fixed? Hmm. Because you need your car to go to work, right? Mm-hmm. If a recession hits, right, and like you're going to physical therapy, right, are you going to stop going to physical therapy if a recession hits? No. Okay. So, you know, with senior care, think about all the mm-hmm. senior care agencies out there, you know, and, and all the 80 and 90 year olds being cared for. Like they can't live without that lifeline, that person coming into the you know business, you know, or excuse me, into their home every day or every other day to check in to make sure that they're getting fed and their medication is being handled properly and you know and running them to a doctor. They can't live without that person helping them. So again, like senior care is a great example of a recession-proof business because. For the most part, people are going to need these services no matter where the economy is going to be at, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and there are many like, well, think about this. If something happens with your electricity, your plumbing, your air conditioning, are you not going to get it fixed? You know, do you imagine summertime, like your air conditioning breaks down, you know, as, 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 and it breaks down, could, are you going to say, oh, we can't afford to fix it? No, people mm-hmm. find a way, right? Mm-hmm. So um, service companies, service company franchises. As a matter of fact, right now, even though we're not in a full recession, obviously the housing market is you know, kind of in that place where because the interest rates are so high, people are not investing in new homes. So when they don't invest in new homes, guess what they do? They make the ones that they have better, better. right? Mm-hmm. So actually, even though like, you know, so outside of like plumbing and repair services like that, there's like home improvement services are actually doing great right now. Like people are painting, you know, Mm -hmm. people are redoing their garage floors. People, if they have a problem with the roof, they're going to fix it. Right. Restoration companies you get. I mean, there's so many different things that are happening in franchising. But what's great about franchising is that there's a lot of different opportunities and many of these opportunities are in that kind of recession-proof business. So some of my takeaways of what you said so far is it's, you you know, you don't necessarily need to have the experience in whatever franchise business you're getting. It's actually more about the skill set and coachability that you may have already that can translate into success into certain concepts. Exactly, exactly. Franchisors... Um, think about this. And so people understand franchising a bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you own the franchise company, all right. And franchises make their money from people being successful because everybody's heard like they have to pay a royalty, right? Mm -hmm. If you own a McDonald's, you're paying a certain amount of every sale to McDonald's corporate. So that goes with any franchise, right? So franchise companies make their money on royalties. So the fact is, if if they award territories, which they do, let's say you decide, you know, you want to own Denver, 
or a portion of Denver. All right. And for me, the franchise company, that's there's an opportunity cost, right? Mm -hmm. Because I could either get someone who's awesome and could do great revenues, or why would I settle on somebody that's not as strong and that does weak revenues, right? So franchise companies nowadays, they're looking for people that could be strong. But the fact is, is that it's really process and systems driven, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could follow the systems, and that's where the training and the sport comes in, okay? Mm -hmm. So as long as you have these skills and you've been in business and you have specific skills that are relatable to the business, okay? And you have a degree of drive, right? They don't want somebody who's passive. They want somebody who's a little more dynamic, who wants to build something, who wants to grow. And that's why you see these franchise, you know, owners where you hear, oh, this guy has five McDonald's or this guy has, you know, um, 10 of this or, you know, or even I like haircutting places, mm -hmm. super cuts or great clips. They, I've, there's owners with 50 of them. Mm -hmm. Imagine 50 of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, but they that's what they do. They want great franchisees and they want to help them grow and scale. But mm -hmm. it's because... They have these systems in place and the training in place. So um, the fact is, is if you have a franchise business model and because they're looking to maximize profitability, they have distilled down their concept and strengthened it to the point where, you know, if you follow the system and, you know, you uh, and, and you watch your KPIs and you do the right things, then there's a good chance you could mitigate a lot of risk. And going in business compared to the 80% of people that open up independent businesses with non franchise, mm -hmm. those people are not around in five years. So it's a, it's a, it's, you know, so much higher success rates in franchising. You know, when I, when I uh, consult with uh, business owners who want to use franchising as a way to expand, but, you know, they're not super familiar with it, I kind of tell them this is kind of, the way you want to set it up is that your system has to be pretty good or almost so good where you can really just take someone off the street and you you obviously have to have the skill set, but they don't have to have the uh, experience in the industry and you can put them through their tra your training system and he or she is successfully able to successfully operate your business. Right. Process dependent. Right. Exactly. So going back to kind of the the actual question you mentioned a couple of industries home care um uh home improvement auto uh auto repair uh kind of the trades plumbing heating air conditioning i think even on a if you kind of even chunk it up and look at it's those things are that are necessity almost for daily living or to have a certain quality of of life that you want right and Kind of besides those, what are even some of other under other industries that maybe someone might not think of that uh, that are even recession proof? Well, um, education, mm. right? So um, I think there's a lot of turmoil with our education system in the U.S., and a lot of people are looking towards these private, independent, and franchise you know, companies to provide education uh, for different, you know, levels of students, right? So you have a lot of the education franchises that I feel are um, are pretty semi-absentee, especially like nowadays, like coding, okay? So think about that. Um, computer coding is, is something where, you know, people are um, basically... Um, like the U.S., I mean, I, I work with people from all over the world and, and different backgrounds. And I actually work with, I've worked with a lot of people from India, from Indian descent. And, and, and a matter of fact, um, uh, technology franchise is another area, too, by the way, that I would say fits in that category. Because, but I, because I have a lot of experience, I place a number of people in a technology franchises. Then, and, and I find like in other countries, I don't know. We seem behind on technology, which I mean, it's odd. But in certain countries, 
there's so much focus on technology because they've mm-hmm. determined long ago, like India, they've got so many schools of technology and so many people mm-hmm. into that because they, you know, in healthcare and things like that. But they've they've determined long ago this is an industry where you could do well and grow and make a good living, and there's a demand for it in the world, right? Mm-hmm. In the U.S. Like kids up to even high school kids, do we really have strong technology education, right? So these technology franchises, you know, um, there's a number of them, three or four or five of them, Mm -hmm. you know, coding franchises. It's a good place for kids to get started. So I like those. That's that's Mm -hmm. kind of recession. And, And then like I was bringing up the technology franchise and let's face it, all businesses are gonna require you know, technology and improvements in technology faster than ever, right? Mm Because again, look at the speed of change that we have in this country in regards in the world in regards to technology. And if you have a small to medium sized business and you're operating that, right? Everything from cybersecurity to just managing the network and so on. Another area that I see that that's not going to, the demand's not going to, um, go down for that. Here's another one that's kind of crazy, a franchise that I like. Um, think about this. Resell clothing. <laughs> All right. There's a really cool, and there's several of them. Mm-hmm. Resell one for just kids, you know, one for adults. I mean, there's resell stores, right? Well, guess what? That's in right now. And if there's a recession, could you imagine what's going to happen with resale clothing industry? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me give you also a neat idea. Have you ever like noticed in the parking lot of a grocery store that you could donate clothing in one of those big metal boxes, mm-hmm. donation boxes? Yeah. Yeah. There's a franchise huh. that has that you could get into that business and you could own those boxes. Yes. And people will donate clothes and you could place those boxes around the neighborhood. Okay. So think about this. What if you own the clothing resale store and you also own those boxes where people donate free clothing <laughs> and you, you merge them where you get free inventory. Free right? inventory. <laughs> free inventory, right? It, it, so, it's- uh, you know, so there's, I mean, there's just so many different ideas out there, you know, for recession. I think, though, another thing that I think would be, you know, important to touch on, and I'm happy to talk about, is like, you know, if you were looking into franchising, you know, how do people do that properly? And, you know, what do they need to know before they buy? That's another, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and that, that that's a great question. Before we, we you answer that for us is, you know, you mentioned coding and education. There's a uh, there's a shopping center near where I live, and they've got uh, a mathnasium, which is a you know math tutoring center next door to the Code Ninja. Right. About Ten doors down, there's an art center, and I was telling my wife, man, if there is a martial arts studio and a piano teaching class, <laughs> like parents would never leave that center no, that's <laughs> until, until dinner time. They probably go get dinner in the center and then just go show <laughs> with their you know, There's another crazy category that I think is hot right now. And I think we'll still okay. Do okay. During recession. Mm-hmm. And that's a pet care, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, during COVID there was a, you know, obviously a huge increase in the amount of dogs and pets overall. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So pet care is thriving right now. You know, pet care, um, first of all, what I'm seeing is um, pet grooming, big business, mm-hmm. mobile grooming. More and more people want the convenience of someone going to their house and doing grooming. So there's been this you know, growth of the mobile grooming industry. And there's a number of new brands that are now really you know, pushing that service where you don't have to bring your dog to you know, a pet smart. You could just have call up and have a you know, have someone come by. But in many markets, like I was speaking to one of my clients uh, this week and they were saying, geez, it's like they're booked out for like six, eight weeks. You have to really schedule well in advance. And and I found that to be, you know, kind of crazy, but great for him, if you know. But, um, but 
there's also there's all kinds. There's everything from pet food to that to mm-hmm. even pet training. You know, dog training. There's mm-hmm. been um, there's a couple franchises for dog training. Imagine people that love dogs. You know, with all these dogs and training them to behave, training them to to listen, and and maybe even training them to do some cool tricks too. I mean, so dog training's hot right now. Pet the pet industry has been booming. So going, going back to the to the the question you asked earlier, for someone who is interested in buying a uh, a franchise lo- unit, what are the, some of the things that they should be looking out for, and and maybe kind of introspective of themselves whether you know just franchising generally is is right for them. Well, <clears throat> first of all, you have to. Um... You have to do the right due diligence, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, you have to, like, when I work with clients, I'm getting to know their backgrounds, right? But, you know, like, you have to look within yourself and saying, okay, where am I in life? What am I willing to do? How hard do I want to work? What do I want to build? How much do I want to invest? So I'll give you some examples. Okay. I work, I tend to work with a lot of people in their fifties. Okay. They've worked at corporate America for 20, 30 years. They're tired of it. They're tired of punching the clock. They can only go so far. They want freedom. They, they've seen people get a franchise and scale it. Right. So again, you know, it comes down to uh, finding a business that they could manage, hire and manage managers and grow the business and not work in the business. Too many mm-hmm. people make a mistake of working in the business. They got to work on the business, scale mm-hmm. it. So first thing, really take stock of where you're at, what your goals are, right? How much money do you want to make? Where do you want to take this business? All right. Do you plan on scaling the business? So you want to determine... Is this something you're going to be an owner operator or a semi absentee owner, right? And do you want a business that's highly scalable? I would look at the market and see, you know, not every franchise is great for every market, right? Mm -hmm. Like a pest control franchise works fantastic in the Southeast, but here in Las Vegas, where I live, um, not as much need. We don't have mosquitoes out here, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm just saying, so certainly it's funny, like a frozen yogurt franchise, is that going to do fantastically in Minnesota? You know, well, maybe not as because you got too too many cold months and you're only going to, you're going to be living off the, you know, only the six months of the year where people are going to go out for that. So you're losing a lot of revenue potential, right? Mm-hmm. Look at the market. Okay. Um, listen. You have to also understand like what customers and people are saying about the brand, right? right? So if you're interested in a franchise, A, take a look on for online reviews. See what mm-hmm. people are saying about the franchise. Do some research online. You know, do do all kinds of searches to find out what other people are saying about the brand and the franchise opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. So you could hear maybe or, or or find some things on the franchise and from customers. Like if I was going to buy a franchise, obviously I would visit a location and I would even try to talk to a customer. Hey, what do you like about this? You know, how long mm-hmm. do you, have you been coming here? Is this something you, you know, so you, you'd camp out for a few hours and talk to a bunch of customers, right? Mm-hmm. Or go visit, you know, a location and try to, you know, catch the, catch the owner or schedule something, right? Right. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, all franchises have what they call a franchise disclosure document, okay? Mm -hmm. As part of the due diligence process, you're going to be provided by the franchisor with a franchise disclosure document, which is a requirement of the Federal Trade Commission, right? So, um, listen, there are so many resources online. If you do a search online and say, what do I need to know about franchise disclosure documents and how do I, you know, understand them? Or, I mean, there's so many different searches you could do. There's so much content on 
how do you review a franchise disclosure document? Just for those people who don't know, in that document, there is, you know, first of all, an overview of the leadership and who they are, where they've been, right? There's any, you know, has this brand had any litigation against them, right? Mm -hmm. Or have they had stores closed and why, right? Um, what's the breakdown of the initial investment? What fees are there? What's the responsibility of the franchisee? What's the responsibilities of the franchisor, right? The, um, you know, item 19 is the uh, financial performance. What, mm -hmm. what do these stores do? They, they could answer how much money could you make doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding the franchise disclosure documents key, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to know. There's a lot of resources, there's a lot of great books. And there's guys like me who work closely with clients and make sure that they understand what that right due diligence looks like. But there's a lot to know in, in when you properly investigate a franchise. And those are many of the things that I've looked at. Now, you, you mentioned, you know, talking with the owner and the the FDD itself. And uh, I think it's item 20 or 21 where um, you're supposed to list the um, – franchisees yeah, they, they have and there's, franchise. so so what I, what i've advised people in the past is you know like you said call these people if you're not able to visit the actual store and talk to the owner call call these franchisees up and to say hey i'm looking to buy one what do you like about it what do you don't like about it and i think a lot of uh prospective franchisees can get a lot of insights to see how much support they're getting um from the franchisor because obviously when when the sales conversation happens, they're usually dealing with the salesperson or, you know, the management of the franchisor. And obviously if they've got a certain slant on when you communicate to them, but when you get, I think you'll get a lot of insight when you can talk to the existing franchisees. Oh, I love that. And, um, and you're definitely right about that. I have a few questions that I, so I'll share with them some questions to ask. Mm -hmm. All right. One of the biggest questions is, if you had a chance to turn back the clock of time hmm. and redo this decision, what would that look like? You know, would you do it again? You know, mm -hmm. but then you could also ask like, you know, how long did it take to get to break even? Um, what are you making now? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if you were to say there's a weakness in the corporate team, what would that weakness be or weaknesses be? You know, what are they great mm -hmm. at? What are they weak at? You know, what do you, you know, how's, um, you know, how strong is the marketing? Is it easy to get customers? Is it hard to get customers? Is it mm. harder than you thought? You know, and so things like marketing and getting customers so key, right? Technology and operations also can make all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. franchises have, are smart. Most of them have invested in technology and that's how they beat out independent businesses, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of to that point, it's economies of scale too, right? Because if one exactly. independent business owner has to buy a certain equipment or software, one license is pretty expensive. But if a franchise system who's got 100 units, they can theoretically, you know, get the cost per license, for example, down so that it would yeah. be. And most, of them have, most of them have built proprietary systems mm -hmm. tailored business yeah but even more importantly on the marketing side okay if you're um you know let's say they work with a digital marketing company and there's 300 locations and they're handling the digital marketing for all 300 locations mm -hmm. could you imagine you know save the savings you would have you know then working with the digital marketing which knows how to get results all right so in the service industry Take a service franchise, right? You have a service franchise. Most of them are really dependent on marketing, all right? And if you're operating a service company, you know, the owners, I mean, they're managing teams. They're managing people. This one's going to that person's house. That one's our business, right? So, I mean, you want it's hard to be great in marketing and do all that and still manage a business. So mm -hmm. you're, it's going to be so dependent to, you know, your these resources that they've developed is, is key, right? And then you know what they often do, which is great? They have call centers, 
mm. tied into the technology, tied into um, so all the scheduling of all you know salespeople or technicians, everything's tied in through this technology. So the marketing, the technicians, the operations, everything. I mean, they, they there's some incredible systems that are multi million dollar systems that would never be available. But because you're part of the franchise system, you get it and you benefit and you rank higher on Google. You get more mm -hmm. customers. There's automated reviews. There's call centers to answer the phone when you can't get to it. Um, mm -hmm. But there's so many different advantages that a franchise could offer um, that really makes the difference between success and failure. So recently... Um... I, uh, someone came to me to help them purchase an existing, uh, existing unit. And, uh, in that particular case, actually the numbers didn't make sense. So they, they end up backing out, um, on the transaction, but, right. uh, in, in your experience where, you know, have you, have you, cause I know a lot of buyers kind of get fall in love or have a honeymoon period with this particular concept. So in your experience, have you kind of put the brakes on somebody and said, hey, hold up a little bit. Let's look this, this, and this. And did they eventually back out uh, uh, of a particular transaction or not yeah, go definitely. forward? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. So um, here's the thing that I think people have to understand um, about how we make decisions, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think this will be helpful. Um, people use intellect and emotion to make decisions, all right? So there's that intellectual side of you mm -hmm. that wants to understand the numbers, the KPIs, all those things that, you know, we make sound decisions with, right? So then you mentioned the other side of it where they love the business, all right? And they fall in love with the business. And then, you know, somebody has to say, well, is this really going to be, you know, First of all, are these numbers accurate and can we prove them? And second of all, you know, does this make sense for you? All right. Mm -hmm. So um, I always ask my clients, I get permission mm -hmm. because they'll get too caught up on the emotion. I'll say, hey, listen, if I'm a, I may see things differently. And, and, and like you said, call you out on this, mm -hmm. you know, because... Now, I would only bring uh, to, you know, I'm only going to bring options that make sense and are strong, you know, are, has strong unit economics, mm -hmm. right? So that intellectual side, that has to have a major check mark, you know, for me to even present a brand to a client, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, I'm, that I'm really confident in their ability to perform, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But I will tell you, some of the, sometimes, you know, a lot of franchisors who kind of walk the line and they and they use broad statements and they leave things a little bit vague. And mm -hmm. that's where you have to take a deeper dive. And that's why it's so important, as we talked about, to talk to existing franchisees and get their perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't go on what, it, you know, a salesman tells you and you can't go with what's in the FTD. Mm -hmm. If you haven't taken the time to talk to not one, not two probably five or more franchisees, mm, mm. you're, you're really creating a higher risky, you know, risky situation for yourself. Yeah, that, that's a very good point. So we're kind of winding down the, the conversation here. What are kind of your uh, parting thoughts uh, as to for someone who's looking to uh, get into buying a franchise cop? So what are some of the things that they should consider? Well, listen, I think that um, looking into franchising is smart because it has a much higher success rate than, you know, being your own boss in an independent business, right? Now you have to determine, you know, what is going to be the right franchise for you. Now, you could do a lot of online searching and you could go and check in and reach out to a lot of franchisors. The problem is that you're going to get inundated with sales calls. So be careful. Do a lot of due diligence. Learn online. There's a lot of content online about and, and videos about how to buy a franchise. What do you need to know? Simple searches. You know, do that before you jump into making contact with franchisors. Because once, you know, you make contact with the franchisors, like I said, you're going to get a ton of calls. And be careful of what I'm going to call 
aggregators in the in the directories because you may fill out a form online on a site that has a thousand franchises and you may have 20 people calling you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you got to be careful of that. You know, consider highly consider reaching out to a guy like me who is going to help you learn and help you as a matchmaker find those franchises that are a good fit for you. So uh, uh, two questions and uh, before we kind of get into the rapid fire uh, portion, uh, you know, you mentioned consultants like yourself. Um, is, is there some out-of-pocket cost for the franchise buyer to work with a consultant? Like, is it kind of like buying a house where, you know, the agent, the buyer's agent gets paid by the, the seller's yeah, agent or, exactly. does, or does the buyer have to pay out-of-pocket, <laughs> you know, for, for you? No, yeah. the fact is, is I don't get paid by the, the buyer. Mm-hmm. All right. Just like in real estate, when you're buying a house, mm-hmm. it's, you know, the seller pays the fees. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I do receive referral commissions from franchisors, mm-hmm. but um, the fact is they're all about the same. And listen, I was in business for over 27 years. It, it you know, the fact is, is this is a big decision for anybody. Mm-hmm. And you don't need anybody misleading you. I don't have 20 go-to brands that I try to fit a square peg in a round hole. Mm-hmm. All right. So if you get with a good consultant, they're going to, you know, they're going to respect um, the fact that this decision is probably one of the big, the biggest decisions you'll make financially. Mm-hmm. And, you know, franchise agreements are for 10 years. So mm-hmm. you got to be sure what you're getting into. So you need mm-hmm. help and a good franchise consultant could help you. And, and, and there's a lot of benefits to working with a guy like me or someone mm-hmm. like me, not just a guy, but there's some great professionals out there in, in this industry. Yeah. And, and then the last question is, um, for a lot of, for a lot of people who maybe left corporate world and like you mentioned before, working on your business, uh, but not, not in your business. And then there's also the idea of certain concepts wanting an owner operator, right? So, how, you know, where do you, you know, you, you mentioned like maybe even passive income, maybe step away, even for the guy who's gotten 50, right? He obviously he can't be in 50 places at once. What do you say to the buyer says, hey, I, I really want to be a business owner where I want to set it up. I want to hire the people. And like, I don't have to, I don't want to have to be there every day. Are, yeah, there, well, are, there, are there concepts available for him or her? Definitely, definitely. See, so I'm aware of, what concepts work well with semi-absentee owners, right? There are some that are owner operator, but there's a lot that are also semi-absentee. And, um, you know, a lot of franchise companies, they want those owners. They want empire builders, right? Mm -hmm. They want people that could train someone to be a manager and then open up that second or third, right? Or fourth or fifth. So they're looking to create those successes. But, Kind of got to know, you know, a which are those franchises and which one of which which of those actually are great franchisors that offer a lot of value. Keep in mind that just like any company, franchise companies evolve over time. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. and as they grow, they refine their capabilities, they refine all their systems, they invest in uh, technology and marketing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Not to say an emerging franchisor can't be good. They can if they're well funded and they really got the right help to mm-hmm. evolve quicker. But you know, just you know, not every franchise I would recommend because they're not all good because they haven't gotten to that point. You know, um, so that you know, we have to look at the value that they provide, and because it's that value that you're paying for when you pay your royalty. So right. you gotta right. be careful. All right, we're here with Marty Greenbaum, certified franchise executive. So right now we're going to get into the rapid fire question portion. So just answer the first thing that pops in your head. You all right? I'm good. <laughs> it's it's all G rated. Hopefully. All right. <laughs> all right. Uh, who do you look up to? Who do I look up to? Well, I'd like to say I look up to my father at first and foremost. Um, for many reasons, because he he taught me a lot in life, and he's passed. He was a Marine veteran from the Korean War, tough guy from Chicago, 
and uh, taught me a lot. And um, so I look up to him. But I also look up when I think of that, I because he was a Marine. I've always had this thing for our veterans too, or anybody who like gives of themselves to help others without worrying about what they're getting. So I would have to say, you know, that that's kind of who I look up to. All right. Uh, what's the best business book you've ever read? Um, there's a book called Contagious mm. about um, it's it's about going viral. And mm. I think nowadays, um, you know, marketing and, 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 and taking a brand and going viral and building that reputation is, is key. So I, I, I love that. Uh, what's the best business advice you've ever received? The best business advice. Um, don't let fear get in the way. Okay. Because I think, you know, the, the fact is, is a lot of times people are held back by fears that aren't really real. Mm -hmm. You know, what mm -hmm. do they call it? False Fear is false, something false evidence real. appearing real. Right. So I'm just saying that people have this fear for not, you know, they're not able to do things and it holds them back and it's crazy, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, if you could do one thing over again, what would it be? One thing over again. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I look at my life and the decisions I made um, and, you know, life goes by quick, right? We make decisions. Um, I was in a in one marketing business, got into a second marketing business. I think I would not have gotten into the marketing uh, business again and probably uh, taken a different path, you know? So the fact is this, we go down life and we, have a path. And guess what? You have a choice. You have a choice at any time to change that path, right? Mm -hmm. So if the path isn't taking you to where you ultimately know you need to be for you and your family, both from a lifestyle or financially or everything, reevaluate what path you're on mm -hmm. and get and find another path. Okay. So you may have answered this next question, but I'll, I'll ask it anyways. Um, are you familiar with the, the term three feet from gold? Um, no. Okay. No. So the, the story goes is that there's a prospector. He, he buys a plot of land and cause he hears there's gold in there and he goes by the, all the equipment and everything and he digs, 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 digs. Finally, he gives up and then sells it to the next person, all his equipment and his land. That person just digs three feet and hits a vein of gold. So my question is, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, how do you know when to pivot? And how do you know you're just three feet from gold? First of all, I would say that you got to watch your KPIs. All right. You got to be, you know, you got to look at, it depends on what business you're in, but, you mm -hmm. know, if you have a sales funnel, track your numbers, your sales funnel, how many people are, you know, getting to what point in the stage, you know, you could, you know, you could get a good feel for things. So I think tracking your KPIs and following the numbers is key. All right. Now, if you have a good process, like if you're thorough in your process, then hopefully you'll mitigate most of that possibility of you missing gold three feet away. So if you've created a great process where you could that you could execute on and, and mitigate much of the risk of missing out on opportunity that may be close. It's all about what's that process look like and how effective is that? So KPI, have a great, keep on, keep on top of your data and have a process that you have confidence in. That's what I'd say. All right, now two more questions. Um, what's the biggest challenge in your business today? Um, really connecting with great people that are ready to, you know, change their lives, right? So I'm always, you know, always looking to make connections with those type of clients that are looking to, you know, find that next thing in their life, you know, and that's why you know, I'm happy to be on a podcast like this. So uh, I'm always, that's my biggest challenge.
Yeah. All right. So last question is, what's something that you purchased recently for less than $100 that has improved, immensely improved your personal or your business life? Purchased for less than $100. Less than one hundred dollars. I don't know if I could come up with that, but I will tell you something neat that I did. Okay, so I used to have a above ground pool that I bought for my four boys in the backyard. It's a twelve by twenty four pool. Okay, so I ended up, you know, they're getting older. They don't. They I, you know, I uh, I was tired of cleaning it for them. So what we did. So I had a basketball hoop at the end of the pool that we'd shoot hoops from the pool into the basketball. Mm -hmm. I took down the pool and we just had dirt there. And then my youngest son says, dad, why don't we just have a basketball court there? So I did, I had a guy come in and do custom pavers. And so we have now a basketball hoop, a basketball court, not a big one, but mm -hmm. a, uh, you know, I have four teenage boys and that's been like, I don't know. I love the fact that they could play. I've been playing so much horse, you know, the last <laughs> few weeks since. <laughs> I haven't been winning. I'm always they're tall and they're good, yeah. you know. But I'll tell you something. That basketball hoop, you know, anything you could do to keep your family together. and I mean, that's like, you know, in life, keep in mind this. We work not because we love to work. We work for our family mm -hmm. and, you know, and uh, I don't know, doing something like that where now we have a place, a little, you know, this place where we could hang out, shoot hoops. I mean, how great is that? I'm a, I'm a lucky man, not for the hoop, really <laughs> for the family that I, that I'm fortunate to have. So, yeah. um, you know, so life is good. I can't complain. I got a basketball hoop in the guard, backyard. Come on. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't complain. Maybe you should play franchise instead to give you more opportunities to, uh -huh. uh, you know, catch up on, you know, some of the scoring. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, Marty, oh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's very valuable, very insightful. Uh, if our listeners want to get in contact with you, maybe they're looking to get into um, buying a franchise, but not sure where to start. What's the best way to reach you? So my website, Smart Franchise Investing. Smartfranchiseinvesting.com. My email is Marty at smartfranchiseinvesting.com. So, you know, you could connect me, you know, connect with me through my, you know, website and love to chat with you if you had some, if someone has some interest, I'm here to help. And uh, like I said, I'm not charging anything. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, happy to talk to anybody. All right. Thanks again, Marty Greenbaum from Smart Franchise Investing. We'll put those uh, information in the show notes and hopefully we can talk again soon. Hey, thank you. Great, great time today. I appreciate um, great questions. So thank Likewise. you. All right. All right.